Hi, Lopez. Got a minute? Certainly, senor. How can I help you? Any ideas yet? We are looking for a source of water, see? Yes. For generations, the Spanish country folk have had a secret way of locating water, even if it is meters beneath the ground. Ah, you're not talking about water dousing, are you? Eh? You know, you get a stick and walk around until the stick twitches and dig there. Oh, you've heard of it. Yeah, I think most of the planet has. Okay, let's get a stick. Uno momento. It must be a special stick. A Y of hazel. Right. Do you have any hazel trees? Here. Here. That is hazel. I went over to find a suitable stick. I don't believe it. There wasn't a single usable Y-shaped branch on the whole damn thing. There wasn't a single usable Y-shaped branch on the... It was the driveway down to the main road. I didn't want... I went over to find a suitable stick. Aha! Hi, Lopez. Got a minute? Certainly, senor. How can I help you? Well, I got my divining rod. Now what? Simplicity itself, senor. Hold the wand at the upper ends of the Y. Apply a little tension with your wrists so that the slightest movement of the wand tip is clear and walk slowly and steadily over the area. Sounds easy enough. <laughs> we'll find this well in no time. Senior Stobart, you've... you've found something. This is it. This is where we find the secret of the Templars. Hidden here for hundreds of years. Lost from the sight of man until now.
The mystery is revealed. It's a tin can. I've been walking up and down with a twig in my hands, looking for a tin can. It had water in it. That's what the dowsing stick must have detected. I'd have to check with an archaeologist, but I don't think the Templars left that. In truth, Senor Strobart, the lawn was laid many, many years ago. This can could date back to the Napoleonic Wars. Get rid of it and I'll try it again. Lopez threw the can away. It seemed to fall an awfully long way. The splash at the end confirmed what we both suspected. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. It has been here all the time. All those years and nobody found it. Stood in awe for a moment, marveling at the secrets all around us. I could have fallen down that. The well had been lost for decades at least. The air was cool after the noon sun, but that's not what gave me goosebumps. I have a really, really bad feeling about this. From a distance, the lion's head had been impressive. Close up, it was frightening. Hey, one of the fangs is a separate piece. I could hear the sound of a lot of stone moving, and I knew I was in danger. <laughs> oh, very funny, you psychos! Senor Stoba! Senor Stoba! Are you all right? It's okay, Lopez, I'm fine! Hey, Susto Mirazada, you gave me a scare. Nice try, Templars. I wish that I had Leary's flashlight now. It was too dark to see and I had to rely on touch. It just felt like a pitted stone wall. I'd almost been killed for the sake of a red herring. I wish that I had, it was too, it just felt like I'd almost It was a long way down. The brilliant midday sun shone almost directly down the shaft, and I still couldn't see the water.
It was a small mirror hanging over the sink. I realized I could use the mirror to reflect the light from above. There, in the middle of the door, I could see some kind of socket. It looked like this wasn't quite the dead end it seemed. I slid the stone key into the lock. There were buttons that turned the dials. I must have made a mistake. The lock spun back to neutral and nearly took my fingers off. I was going to have to start from scratch again. Oh, not another mistake. I heard the sounds of the lock moving. Either that or the wall was going to come down on my head.
Oh, yes! Uh, bonus points for that, I hope. I knew the old Stobart finger work wouldn't let me down. Before I left, though, there was one last thing to do. You won't be needing that replacement piece anymore, Countess. I found it with the children. You'll probably want to be alone for a while. I'll be out in the garden with Lopez. George, welcome back. Come in, George. It's good to see you again. Is it? Sure. What did you find in Spain? Without Andre, we wouldn't have got this far, George. Yeah, I know. The clues led to an underground chamber at the bottom of a well. The Templars had left a tapestry showing a chessboard. The white pieces were vastly outnumbered. There was a stream running across the board, and a Templar knight on a horse. Does it mean anything to you, Andre? No, nothing. Maybe we should tell Andre what else you found, Georges. There's a map and a Latin inscription to the west at the edge of the world. Georges found that in a cave in Syria. Yeah, where the assassin almost killed me. Then we've got the burning of Jacques de Molay and the date, 1314. From the window of the church in Montfaucon Square, one of the few places where nobody tried to kill me. Then we have the image of a church that Georges found at the excavation. I don't recall anyone trying to kill you there either, Georges. And finally we have the tapestry in Spain. Did I mention I almost got killed there? Not yet, but I'm sure you're about to. It was only my cat-like reflexes that saved me from certain death. Cat-like reflexes, eh? And while I was risking life and limb, where were you, Andre? Getting your glasses fogged up over an Etruscan vase? That's enough, boys. Can we get back to saving the world? Of course. My apologies. He started it. Well, uh, the Latin phrase are the words of Julius Caesar. He was describing the island of Britain. Are you sure? The map didn't look much like Britain. How come Caesar described Britain as being at the edge of the world? To the Romans, the Mediterranean was the center of the universe. Britain was a remote, unfriendly place, inhabited by blue-painted savages. It hasn't changed much. Well, they've stopped painting themselves blue. Except when they go to a football match. They used an extract from a plant called Woad, Isetis tinctoria. The Scots were using it until fairly recently in their wars with the English. Fairly recently? I don't recall the Scots being at war with the English. How recently are you talking about? I believe William Wallace's men used it in the 13th century. They might well have been using it as late as... Uh... You can't remember, can you? 1314. Ah, we're back onto that, are we? Andre, what is it? What do you mean? 1314 in Scotland. The Battle of Bannockburn. That would explain the stream on the chessboard. That's what a burn is. Right, Andre? As in Bannockburn? Right, George. And it gets better. Tradition has it that the Scots were helped by a shock force of, uh, well, can't you guess? Nat Templar? Yes, a group of outlawed Templars. They are said to have turned the tide for the Scots. And it all ends at a church in the Isle of Britain at Bannockburn in a church. What are we waiting for? I'll call a cab. I can't go. Andre, you've been loads of help, but... What George is trying to say is that you shouldn't feel guilty. I was? We understand you've got commitments. But listen, we have to hurry. Let's go, George. We'll see it through. Oh, and, uh, don't worry about us. Pardon me. She must be deaf. Yes, my dear. Do you know what time we're due in Stirling? A quarter to six, but we're running. 
Eight minutes late. What's the book you're reading? Oh, it's something I've picked up at the station. A medieval detective story. Quite well written for that kind of thing. It's been out of print for years. What's the title of the book? The Crooked Crusader Caper by Molly Pegram. I assumed the author was a woman, but apparently not. His real name is... Professor Nigel Pegram. That's right. Do you know him? No, I never met him. George is a great fan of his, though. Do you know Sterling well? Yes, I do. Is that where you two lovebirds are bound? Yeah, we... It's one of the places we thought we'd stay on our holiday. Be sure to visit the castle, won't you? Oh, I'm sure it's a neat place. But we are not really interested in history, are we, George? Uh, no. Is there a church called St. Ninian's at Serling? Yes, there is. And I know why you're going there. You do? Of course I do. It's obvious you're in love. You're eloping. And they say romance is dead. Would you believe that this clown's nose led us to being on this train tonight? I would indeed. No, honestly, it... You would? Certainly. You have an honest face. Yep. That's a nose with a history, all right. So you said. Does the name Merlin mean anything to you? Merlin? A master of illusions. Oh, you said Merlin? Then, no. Nothing. Do you know what this is? Yes, I do. A young friend of mine shook my hand with one just the other day. Yeah? Well, that's outrageous. He should be shot. Perhaps. Still, his intentions were good. I'm sorry that you've been zapped by one of these things. You shouldn't be. Where are you going, Georges? Do I need to spell it out? Don't snap at me. If you're going to take a leak, why don't you say so? Okay, I'm going to take a leak. L-E-A-K. Tickets, please. Oh, hi. That's a standard full-price peak return. Don't you have a senior citizen's rail card? I rarely travel by train. My ticket is perfectly valid, is it not? Well, yeah, but you could have saved up to a third of the cost. I do not need to indulge in puffling thriftiness. Blimey, you're a funny old bird and no mistake. Tickets, please, sir. Here. Off to Sterling, eh? Yes, we are. Well, I hope you won't be disappointed. It's a miserable place this time of year. Still, there's plenty of pubs and a lovely view from the castle. Thank you. I don't want to worry you, but there was something familiar about that guy. Are you sure? You're tired. Perhaps you're mistaken. Hmm, maybe. But I didn't like the look in his eyes when he spoke to you. Can't you sit still, George? I need to go to the job. While you're there, check out the buffet car, George. Unthinkable, though, it is. Okay. Hi. Having a party? No. He says, Brutus, come and join us, man. Go away, Basha. Wake up, man. What's company? His breath was like the outlet from a chemical factory. Excuse me, mate. He's taking a nap. 
and sleeping like a bobby. I'd wake him up when we get to Newcastle. We passed through Newcastle half an hour ago. And I never noticed. What is that stuff you're drinking? It smells like gasoline. Why? I'll put tears in your chest, Lake. And your eyeballs, too, by the looks of you. Would you like a red nose? Oh, thanks, pal. I got one of my own. Have you ever seen this man before? Aye, man. He's chalky white, and I claim my ten quid, Lake. No, he's an international assassin, and he goes by the name Khan. Well, I, man, but I was close, you know. Do you know what this is? No, man, what is it? It's a hand buzzer. You won't catch me up with that, pal. If I'd wanted to catch you out, I wouldn't have shown it to you, would I? Well, maybe it's his mate, pal. Like a clever double bluff, you know. See you later. I didn't want to wake him. To be frank, without a cold water hose, I didn't think I could wake him. I should have known better than to leave Nico and the old lady alone. Suddenly, the sword of Bafama took second place to finding the girl I loved. Hey, buddy. Listen, I need your help. What's the matter? There's a guy on this train who's trying to kill me. Relax, man. You wouldn't try nothing with us in Basaria. We are veterans like so action at right and see. I don't recall the British Army being involved in a conflict in anywhere called Brightling Sea. Well, you just check it for me, pal. You're in safe hands. Did you see what happened to the young woman in the next compartment? No, pal. I didn't have you lost her like. She's disappeared. The old lady, too. I think they're in trouble. Oh, yeah, man. An old lady, too. Yeah. You gotta help me. Maybe they went to the toilet, like. I don't think so. You never go on our own. I was in pairs, you know. No, she's been abducted. I'm sure. I've got to go look for her. But stop in his pal. The conductor. He's not what he seems. You want to avoid him, like? That's about it, yeah. No problem. See you later. Thank you. 
Do it, do it, Paul, do it, jump! I don't intend to jump. I'm going to climb on top of the train. You're kidding, aren't you? Just watch me. Hold on there, Paul, I'll give you a hand, like. You saved our lives, but why? We were always on the same side, Stobart. Different causes, but a common enemy. The Knights Templar? Don't call them that. The real Templars were a noble foe. These uh, barbarians have no right to that name. These men are no better than dogs. What are the Neo-Templars after? What is the Sword of Baphomet? Not what you think, my friend. It is a weapon, yes, but one which our enemies will find difficult to wield. A double-edged sword. A power older than Timole, older than Solomon. We'll stop them. You and me together, and Nico. No, George. My journey ends soon at the Garden of Paradise. You're talking in riddles. Can't you tell me straight what they're after? The sword symbolizes a colossal energy caused by the alignment of the Earth's natural power fields. Which are focused at St. Ninian's. The energy endowed the Templars with the power which made them great. A power which made them charismatic to such an extent they could control the will of all around them. Uh, that is not a good idea. Uh, no. Hmm, no way. How did you escape from the bull's head? It is a long walk from the cliff of the bull to the village, Stobart. Fortunately, I know the ways of the wilderness. May Allah guide you to our enemies. Thanks. One last thing. What? What is it? He's dead. Don't worry. I hadn't forgotten about you. And tell me this instant, Jean Stobart. I will. When I'm ready. Oh, that's not fair, George. No. You took advantage while my hands were tied. When Eklund pointed that gun at me, I thought I was going to die. I thought of all the things I'd never get to do. And kissing you was at the top of my list. Josh? Uh-huh? Josh, we've got to get off the train. Eklund could recover at any time. So what are we waiting for? What are you doing? I'm out of here. Not that dog. Do you want to end up like Flap? Not especially. What remains of him is well on his way back to London. I hope he was traveling on a return ticket. I'd feel happier if we had a gun or something. Khan gave me something. What? His handbag. Oh, great. If we run into any killers, we can give him a good buffeting. Didn't he have any weapons? You don't know half of it. This bag's full of C4. Wow. Why didn't you say so? Boy, we'll show him now. 
What's she for? Plastic, Josh. We're going to shop our way to victory? Two kilos of plastic explosive. The detonator's broken, though. No problem. We'll buy a box of matches somewhere. It doesn't work that way. It takes a small explosion to start the big explosion. Well, that's not much use, then. What does that sign say? Apparently, during the English Civil War in the mid-17th century, this place was used as an arms dump. Yeah? What happened? Look at the state of this place, Georges. You work it out. Oh, stray spark? You got it. The tower was the only thing to survive the blast. I hope the explosion didn't destroy the Sword of Baphomet. Do you? I rather hope it did. The handle turned easily and the larger wheel began to revolve. Damn! Then the handle came off in my hand. I pushed the handle into the demon's mouth. Hmm, no way. Uh, no. I tried pushing the panel, but wasn't surprised when it failed to move. Now that the handle was gone, it was easy to remove the cog and spindle. The cog slipped neatly into the eye socket. Nico? Uh-huh? What are you doing? Committing this inscription to memory. Can you read it? No. I scrabbled around in the rubble and found an old clay pipe with a broken stem. I was sure the clay pipe wasn't meant to fit in there. It was no good. The demon wasn't inhaling. Uh... Under one of the stones, I found a metal coin which was... Maybe not. It was caked with soil, but what I'd found was a small cog and spindle.
With a rasp of metal on stone, I eased the second eye into place. The cogs all meshed. It began to turn. As soon as I saw the flickering torches, I realized the bogus Templars had beaten us to the sword. But where were they now? And why was it so quiet? Listen, I can definitely hear chanting. You're right. I hear it too. What do you suppose they're doing? It wouldn't surprise me if they were holding some kind of satanic sex ritual. So, what are we waiting for? Will you look at that? Baphomet. Lovino was right. This place was ancient even to the Templars. This whole place? This is Baphomet? Finally, the truth. The Templars had never worshipped this graven image. No more than they'd worship a rainbow. But, like a rainbow, they regarded it as a symbol of a covenant with God, who'd revealed this place to them. Rosso! Why, the double-dealing treacherous? On the contrary, Inspector Rosso has been the model of obedience. An important quality in a true Templar. Now be quiet and watch, if you wish to live much longer. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here to witness the reforging of the sword that was broken. Here before God's sentinel, Baphomet. Grand Master and Knight of Baphomet, we salute and pledge our obedience to you. I salute you, Gatekeeper of the Temple. Seven centuries ago, our greatest weapon, the sword of Baphomet, was lost to us. Now we prepare to reforge it, to wield against new enemies. We shall lead the people to a new order, wherein all borders will dissolve. All will be united under the Red Cross of the Templars. George, we have watched your efforts to stop us with respect. But surely you realize that you have been misled by our enemies. Both of us want a better world. Fortunately, no harm has been done. We need determined, resourceful men like you. Join us, George. Join us in true brotherhood. Yeah, true. Wait, brothers? What about Marquet? What about Pegram and Klausner? You didn't look on them as brothers, only as failures. Three men dead and you don't give a damn. George. You know that sacrifices are necessary. Every great undertaking. Join you. I'll see you in hell first. Ah, oh, Georges. I had great hopes for you. C'est la guerre. Eklund. Kill him. I swear, I just...
dass du an die trinkst, du Take them. Kill them. They will not escape. Well, well. If it isn't the great detective and his beautiful assistant, it's going to be a pleasure killing the pair of you. Josh, what are we going to do? Come on, Nico. We're leaving. You fools! You cannot escape us. Guido! Stop them. But, Master, the powder! That powder is from the English Civil War! You fool! He's over 300 years old! How explosive do you think it can be? I thought it was all over, but Nico had one last trick up her sleeve. Or, in her handbag to be exact, a handbag full of plastic explosives. Maybe, but this stuff is brand new. We didn't stay long in Scotland. George had a vacation to finish, and I had another story to write. Not the real story, of course, but enough half-truths to fill a page and pay my rent for the month. George and I hung out together in Paris. I showed him my favorite restaurants, and he told me his best jokes. You know, Nico, this city holds so many memories for me now. The cafes, the music... The sewers. Tell me about it. The clowns. The jugglers. <laughs> and your pal Labano. Oh, yes, dear Andre. When we first met, and I was doing my detective stuff, you kind of disappeared a lot, Nico. Were you and Labano, uh... There was something happening, but nothing to do with Andre. Uh-huh. It was something from the past that I had to deal with, on my own. So, I dealt with it, and now it's over. Hey, did I ever tell you the one about the old Irish couple in the lottery? No, but I think you're going to. Okay, there's this old Irish couple. They've been married forever, like 50 years, and they win the lottery.